shall not grow old as we that are left grow old age shall not weary them nor the years condemn at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them uh, i want to introduce uh, in finders fields because we're going to do it uh, differently at this service it was right at the nine o'clock, but we don't have the ability there yet to do a streaming of service uh, of, of music from outside. Uh, some years ago, our daughter Allison, uh, Lynn, and uh, Gerald Fleming, her husband, uh, they're known, as you know, uh, by Infinitely More, and they recorded, uh, Gerald wrote the music, they recorded in Flanders Fields, and uh, it was on YouTube. Uh, somebody in the United States saw it and liked it so much that he thought that he would put some uh, visuals uh, with the music and the singing. And he did it because uh, he wanted to prepare something for a widow who was grieving the loss of her uh, husband overseas. And uh, so uh, this is on YouTube anytime you want to look it up. But uh, we are now going to play and hear song and see the visuals of In Flanders Fields.
Flanders Fields We will not sleep Though poppies grow In Flanders Let us pray. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. 
strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning, words of peace from the Gospels. From Luke, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward all people. From Mark, Jesus said to his followers, Be at peace with one another. From John, our Lord also said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Again from Mark, Jesus said to the woman who was healed, Your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Be free from your suffering. Again from John, Jesus said, The Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And finally from John, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. Be to God. I want to take your minds back to 1918. It's the 11th hour and the 11th day of the 11th month. The end officially of the First World War. Around the world this coming week at the 11th hour and the 11th day of the 11th month, we will gather virtually in many places to remember those who gave their lives, to remember them, and to honor those who survived. Three names I want us to concentrate on as we think about today. John McRae, Lawrence Binion, Jeffrey Studdard Kennedy. Lawrence was a dramatist, John a doctor, and Jeffrey an Anglican chaplain in the war. But they had one thing in common. They wrote poems about the First World War. One at the beginning, one in the midst of the war, and the third one at the end of the war. In 1914, we'll up, Spinion is sitting on the cliff uh, overlooking the channel between England and Europe. He's reflecting on the response from the war effort of the number of people who had died in war. It wasn't too long before that day that he had watched the ships take the soldiers from England to Europe to engage in war. And now he wants to reflect on the sacrifices made by these people. He thinks about England as the mother of the soldiers who had gone overseas and there fighting for the cause of freedom and peace. He thinks about their courage and how they died, in his words, they fell with their faces to the foe. In other words, they were courageous. He wondered how they could remember those soldiers in the future. And he began to reflect on day and night. 
and the stars that come out at night, but are hidden during the day. And he knew that it was at night that it would be a difficult time for them to be remembered and would be a difficult time for those going through sadness. And that's why he wrote the lines which we heard this morning at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. In other words, all the time. A year later, in 1915, John McCrae had just gone to a funeral of a friend who had died in battle. He returned back to his camp and went to work in the operating room. After a number of hours uh, there, he wanted a break, so he walks outside. As he's standing by the tent, he sees the small wooden crosses that mark the graves of the soldiers who had died. And then he noticed the red poppies, the flowers, blowing between these crosses, one representing death and the other representing life. And then he heard the sound of the larks singing. And he thought that somebody should speak for the dead. And what would the dead say? And in the midst of his poem in Flanders Fields, he says that the dead want us to remember the reason why they gave their lives for freedom, for peace in our world. And he implies that if we do that, than those lying in these graves in France. They would be able to sleep, to rest in peace, and that we would carry on the torch that they threw to us, the torch of freedom and peace. Three years later, in 1918, the war is now over and the troops are beginning to prepared to go back home to different countries around the world. Jeffrey Studdard Kennedy, also known better perhaps as Woodbine Willie, because he gave, when he gave a Bible or a New Testament to a soldier, also gave them a package of Woodbine cigarettes. He was watching the soldiers prepare to leave Europe to return home. He wondered what kind of reception they would receive. And then he wondered what kind of world would emerge from the Great War. He wrote many poems, but this is one of my favorites that he's written. It's called The Marching Song. And if you wish, you may want, just want to close your eyes and imagine the scenes as I read these words from Woodbine Willie from 1918. I can hear the steady tramping of a thousand thousand feet, making music in the city and the crowded village street. I can see a million mothers with their hands outstretched to greet for the armies marching home. I can see a million visions that are dancing overhead of the glory that is dawning where the sky is burning red of the countries to be builded for the honor of the dead, for the armies marching home. I can see the broken women choking back their scalding tears, all the barren, empty grayness of their lonely, loveless years. But their duties to the living and they'll only give cheers as the army marches home. I can see a crowd of children on the crest of yonder hill. I can hear their little voices cheering, cheering loud and shrill. Tis that they may grow to beauty that our flag is flying still as the army marches home. 
there's a crowd of wooden crosses in the wounded heart of France where the cornfields used to glisten and the blood red poppies dance. Can't you hear the crosses calling us to give the Christ a chance? Now the army's marching home. Oh, we'll build a mighty temple for the lowly Prince of Peace and the splendor of its beauty shall compel all wars to cease. There, the weak shall find a comrade and the captive find release when the army marches home. In our hearts, it shall be builded and of spirits tried and true, and this courts shall know no boundaries, say the boundaries of the blue. And it's there we shall remember those who died for me and you when the army has marched home. The gospel verses John read this morning reflect on peace, the message from Jesus. The angel spoke of peace on earth to the shepherds. Jesus said to the woman who was healed to go in peace. Knowing what the disciples would face after the resurrection going out into the world, he gave them the gift of peace. And that's the gift that we give to the world today. But where does it all start? In 1955, Jill Jackson and Cy Miller wrote a song or a poem. It's been sung by many people around the world. I'm sure you know it. It's asking where do we pick up the torch for freedom and peace and love? What are the suggested challenges and actions for us in the poems of Lawrence and John and Jeffrey. Jill and Sai said, it's up to us. And they wrote, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God, our creator, family, all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with I hope you filled in the last word. Nod your head if you did. If not, do it now. It starts with us. Let us affirm the faith that draws us here. Because we believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn. In the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands. Where conflict and caring link arms. And the sun rises over barbed wire. Together we believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. And we affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place into action, into vulnerability and into the streets. Today we commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line to bear responsibility and take risks live powerfully and face humiliation, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the Holy Spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. Let us join together then in the prayers of the people. To the bidding, Lord in your peace, please respond hear our prayer. United in one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all those in need, for peace of mind, to calm and comfort. 
God of peace, our hearts are filled with gratitude for the many messages of peace you have given to us. In today's unprecedented world, we pray people worldwide will remember your wisdom and kindness. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We pray your children will go forward in peace with inquiring minds searching for the truth rather than fright. Lord, in your peace, hear our prayer. God of peace, we thank you that your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are bigger than our thoughts. Help us to lay our ways and thoughts all down at your feet, every burden, every care, believing that is the safest place for it to be. Lord, in your peace, hear our prayer. God of peace, our hearts are filled with gratitude and respect to all those who served in wars, offering their bodies, hearts, and energies as they fought for freedom. We pray for the service of men and women who died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known by you. We are humbled by their sacrifices for the liberties we now enjoy. Lord, in your peace, hear our prayer. Loving God, in honor of November being celebrated as National Diabetes Month, we offer our prayers to the 400 million patients worldwide suffering from diabetes. We pray the ongoing clinical trials at the University of Chicago will achieve success to cure diabetes. We offer our appreciation to the patients volunteering for this trial where only the sickest of the sickest is chosen. Lord, in your peace, hear our prayer. God of peace, we pray that everyone worldwide might have the opportunity to live a free and inspired life. We pray for individual freedom and community health and well-being, all crucial ingredients for a peaceful life. Lord, in your peace, hear our prayer. As riots continue throughout the world, we pray the protesters' despair can be turned to hope, their fear turned to trust, their hate turned to love, from riots to peace. We pray for peace in people's hearts, in our world, in our universe. Lord, in your peace, hear our prayer. In the Worldwide Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the church in the province of West Indies. In the Niagara Diocese, we pray for the right Reverend Susan Bell, Diocesan Bishop, and the staff at Cathedral Place. Lord, in your peace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we pray for those who are grieved. Please keep and carry those precious people in their sadness and loss. We pray they may find strength and support from the love and caring of family and friends and will find peace in praying and in your healing love. Fill our hearts with peace that we may rejoice all the days of our living and be comforted in the strong and loving name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, please add your own prayers aloud or in silence. I'd like to pray for our new rector. I'm thrilled that she's going to be our new rector. I'd like to pray for Hollis as God. And thank, thank, I thank you, Lord, for all that he has done over these last few months. Let us also pray for Michael Korn, who begins his ministry at St. Christopher's next Sunday. And uh, 
And we pray for John giving thanks for his ministry and also as he prepares to lead God's people in another parish and for all of us in our own respective ministries. Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The uh, hymn this morning is called um, After the War. Um, it's by a uh, young Canadian woman called uh, named uh, Sarah Sleen. Um, she actually just uh, uh, hails from uh, Guelph area. Um, and uh, this song of hers uh, was made famous um, uh, in the 2017 movie um, Passchendaele. Um, the singer is, you'll hear is uh, Shanna Thompson.
My friends, we have come together today to remember. To remember those who have made sacrifice. To remember those who continue to sacrifice. And to pray for peace. So that others might never need to make that sacrifice. And so I bless you this day with the peace of God, which passes all understanding. May it keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the one who created us, the one who redeems us, and the one who sanctifies us this day and forevermore. Amen.